Something happened here, dude. <laughs> it really cranks. Something happened that was not fair. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Sorry, what were your questions? Hey, what's going on, everybody? For First We Feast, I'm Sean Evans, and you're watching Hot Ones. It's the show with hot questions and even hotter wings. And today I'm joined by Rich Bryan. His debut album, Amen, is out now. And for those of you in San Francisco, LA, or New York, you can catch him this month on 88 Rising's Double Happiness Tour. Brian, welcome to the show. Thank you, Sean. Not our first spicy meal together, but I have to ask, how are you with hot food? I've been so curious about like how hot these wings actually are because I'm pretty good with hot food, you know? Like, I just love to eat just like chili flakes and rice. Well, it sounds like you have a good foundation. We have the chocolate milk on deck. The wings are sauced and ready to go. You want to get it started? Let's do it. Let's Let's do this. Let's go, man. Let's do it. Pretty good. Mm. So I'm gonna start with the Rich Brian blueprint because against all odds, you were able to build this massive audience as a right. teenager <clears throat> homeschooled in Indonesia. And I wonder at that time in your life, how many hours a day were you spending on the internet? Like 24 hours. <laughs> I was just like, I, I had nothing else to do. All I do is just go on YouTube, look at tutorial videos or people vlogging. Vlogs were like my shit back then. Dude, I was watching like, uh, <laughs> this, this dude, I was watching the randomest people ever. This dude called Eric Surf Six. This American dude that's living in Japan, eating food. It, just everybody that talks to the camera and like speaks English because that was like what I was into. It's so interesting because you end up learning and experiencing American culture yeah. through YouTube and through memes, mm -hmm. which is such an interesting <laughs> curriculum. It's such a bizarre curriculum. Right. Can you give me one pro of that and one con? With memes and everything, I got to learn like the American sense of humor because it's so different from the Indonesian sense of humor. It took me like a while to like really learn it. But the cons of it, <laughs> there's so many weird shit on the internet that is not really normal in real life. Like very problematic. And I learned that like way back then. And I'm like, okay, like, okay, so this is like the sense of humor. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. You know, so some things are just warped through the, you know, lenses of the internet. So that's the cons of it. Okay, I like that a lot. It's not that much spicier than the previous one, though. We inch it up over here, Brian. Okay. You know, it's not yeah. that steep a ramp. Dude, that's what I thought it was gonna be. <laughs> I was scared. Actually, no, I wasn't. This is like, sorry, I'm talking with my food in my mouth, but it happens on the show. I'm like doing like all this press stuff, and this is the only thing that I'm not nervous for. Like, my manager asked me today in the car, like. Are you ready for hot ones? Before you even finish, I was like, yes. <laughs> I just like, I've always wanted to be on this show. This is an amazing show. Thank you for having well, me. We've always wanted to have you on. Yeah. So last we spoke, it had been ages since you were home in Jakarta, and that obviously changed recently. In December, you were able to do a hometown show. Mm -hmm. Is that the first time you'd ever performed in front of your parents? Yeah. What yeah. was that like? It was amazing. It was a little too loud for them, so they were watching from the balcony up above. I did like a little shout out to my parents, and then like all the crowd like looked at them, they kind of like hit a little bit, but it was super fun, man. It was like the first time that they saw me in my element. Did you get a chance to introduce them to Joji? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dude, my parents loved Joji. Really? My sister loved Joji. They all went to my house, and my neighbors are like taking pictures with Joji. <laughs> and yeah, I didn't know how they even knew about Joji, but like, yeah, they love him. He's got that worldwide appeal. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I'm so hungry though. Got a little more cut, I like that. So your Twitter's full of gems from the brain of Rich Brian, mm -hmm. but some of them leave more questions than answers. Are you still up on your New Year's resolution to eat more cheese platters? Oh yeah. Dude, I had a cheese platter on the plane on the way here from LA. The what? lady was like, do you want this like a really big chicken wrap, which was probably better for me, or a cheese plate? And I was like, cheese plate. You say Rick and Morty and porn are the biggest influences to your music. I understand that it's difficult to get porn in Indonesia. What's the workaround? <laughs> <laughs> um, the workaround is, um, my parents are probably going to be watching this, so I don't know what you're talking about, dude. I don't... What is porn? <laughs> um, I would say 
use VPN, um, www.caproxy.com. Um, it'll show up. You can type in whatever you want, and it'll, you know, give you the access. <laughs> what is it about the Geico lizard that turns you on? <laughs> um, there's just something about lizards, man. I was super into dinosaurs. Um, I drew dinosaurs a lot when I was a kid. Until, you know, at one point where my parents said that it was satanic and made me throw away all my drawings. Geico, I feel like, combined the coolness of the lizard and then mixed it with... It has an accent. Have, yeah, they have an accent. And, like, the, I feel like the accent is what made it hot. Why can all life's problems be solved by listening to Life is a Highway? Because life is a highway. And I just want to fucking ride, like, all day long. I like that. I like that a lot. You make that yourself? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Me and Chris in a bathtub. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. So we recently met up and you schooled me in Indonesian cuisine at Bali Kitchen in mm -hmm. New York. But I have it on good authority from one of our mutual friends. I'm talking about the double cheeked up one himself, Bill Ratchet. Yes. That you can get it done mm -hmm. in the kitchen as well. Right. What's your signature dish? <clears throat> and can you describe how to make it in as much detail as possible? Yes. My mom's going to be so mad at me because this is her recipe and I'm giving it to the world. But it is called Tinoranza. Try saying it. <laughs> Tinoranza? Yep. You, you got it. So the original dish is pork, but I didn't really want it to be too heavy, so I used chicken. The seasoning is turmeric, there's ginger, there's definitely a lot of pepper, like habanero, you know, like there's like some other stuff, but you just blend it all up. And then you marinate the meat with it. I just like put it all in a big bowl and mix it around and then I put it in the fridge. And then while it's in the fridge, I make the rice. I feel like that's like a good marinade time. You just put it in the pan and then you just cook the shit out of it, man. And you give it to your friends. So Bill Ratchet, he tried that and he loved it. Cooking for people is like such a pure thing to do. It's like saying I love you without saying it. Ooh, ham and jack. Did you have breakfast before this? So, thanks for asking. I'll mm. eat real light, you know, maybe a banana in the morning. Mm. Maybe I'll have like a quarter of a bagel with some jelly. I don't want to be on a completely empty stomach. Right. But, you know, you have like a full meal mm -hmm. and then you eat these wings and then they have all this hot sauce on them and then you just end up full and yeah. then like full of hot sauce and like milk and mm. water. You'd have to like roll me out of here. I've made right. that mistake before, but it's like, Painful. Was it painful. the like? Was it the first couple episodes you did that? No, it was uh, the Thomas Middleditch episode, which is way too deep into the game for <laughs> right. me to make that kind of mistake. Yeah. But by uh -huh. the end of it, I'm like, whoa, I'm gonna just puke on my own show. Mm. All right, Rich Brian. So we have a recurring segment on our show called Explain That Gram, where we do a deep dive on our guest's Instagram, pull interesting pictures that need more context. So I'll show you the picture, and you tell me the bigger story. Does that sound good? Good. Laptop, please. All right, up first we got. Mm. <laughs> so, that was me and a goat. There's a lot, a lot of stray goats in my neighborhood. It's pretty sad actually because uh, me and the whole ADA Rising team, we all went to Indonesia and then like they went to the neighborhood and all the goats were not there because it was the annual holiday where people would sacrifice the goats. So all the goats are dead at the time. Oh. But in this picture, that goat was still alive. Hanging out with Jaden Smith. Dude, the best day of my life. I woke up this one morning, I tweeted out, New York was good. <laughs> like, I never tweet anything like that because that's like, I never like really found like a reason to do it. But that morning it just felt right, you know, so I did it. And then Jaden FaceTimes me, He's like, whoa. And I was like, yo, what's up? He's like, where are you? And I'm like, I'm in New York. And he's like, yeah, no, where, where are you though? And I'm like, in Manhattan. He's like, I know, like, where are you though? <laughs> and then I'm, I'm, I was like, I'm in Chelsea's Market. And he's like, cool, like, you wanna hang out? And I'm like, hell yeah. We just had the craziest day ever. He was with his friends. They were all like skateboarding. And we like went to um, Palace, the Palace store. And then he like bought me a skateboard. And I was like, oh my God, that's so sweet. <laughs> and then we all just like skated the whole day. I didn't know how to skate. He like taught me how to skate. It was a blast, man. And then later that night we watched Baby Driver. 
Went home at like 3 a.m. It was super lit. One for the history books. Yes. One more for you. <laughs> What's going on here? I was like just taking a bath for no reason. I put on like the, the towel because I didn't want to be exposed. I was just walking and then there was a big like huge mirror and I looked at it and I was like, damn, I kind of like look good right now. So I just pulled out my phone, posed. This is my favorite pose ever. And then I just like took a picture and that was the picture. Red pepper butternut squash. Do you guys like marinate the chicken and then like cook it or like? So Dom, Dom, did you make them today? So Dom, tell me if I'm wrong on this, right? You'll put the sauce in a bowl, you'll put the wings in the bowl, you'll toss the wings in the bowl, and then it'll go on the, on the plate, right? And so you'll have 20 bowls total, right? Or 10 wow. bowls total. So each sauce has its own bowl. That's awesome. Gets tossed in, full coverage. That's how the Hot Ones platter is served. That's great. I never like heard anybody talk about that, but that's a really cool process. <laughs> there you go. Popping the hood on Hot Ones for you, yeah. Brian. <laughs> Thanks for asking. <laughs> so as I understand it, you're living in Los Angeles, but haven't laid down stakes on a permanent home yet. So you're doing extended stays at Airbnbs. Mm -hmm. And there's really an art when it comes to finessing the Airbnb. Mm -hmm. What are some of your red flags? What are some of the warning signs when you're going into it? The lamps have to be like not white. Just because it just, I hate white lamps, man. I mean, you know, this is like, like a little white lamp situation going on here, but it is. I don't mind it because it's a studio, but like if it's like a house and you're living in it, you don't want it to feel like a hospital. I don't like when I can walk in and sort of smell prom pictures and like an eighth grade birthday right, right. and then like see pictures on the refrigerator. Mm. You know what I mean? I never like to feel like I'm in a house that's like been really lived in. Mm. That's always I, the thing. I actually me. love that. You do? I love it so much. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> What's the best discovery that you've ever made at a spot? Have you ever walked into a spot and they're like, oh shit, they have one of these? It was a really beautiful, like, decorated spot. But then the first thing that I thought of was like, there has to be weed somewhere hidden in here. And I was just looking for it every single day. It felt really stupid. But then, one day I was just trying to make some pasta, right? And then I was in the kitchen. And I was like looking for the pasta, looking for some ingredients. And then there's like, I saw this coffee box with like a little um, little like baggie kind of popping out of it. And I was like, what is going on here? And sure enough, you know, found some mid. <laughs> <laughs> How do you think I'm doing right now? Like compared to like other people? Better than Jody? <laughs> Joji, I thought, I, thought, I thought that might be it for Joji when he was in here. <laughs> What's been the most interesting fan encounter that you've had so far? Because I heard that you had somebody break into your home recently and present you with three boxes of noodles. Mm -hmm. Which I didn't eat. <laughs> We're watching out there. I, I did not get that. And I hate you. <laughs> but um, I feel like the weirdest fan interactions have always happened in Asia. They have like so much like repressed craziness, you know? They're like very calm, like nice people, but then like, you know, this one time, man, I was just walking around a night market in China, and then this 30-year-old <clears throat> lady just like charged at me. She was with her boyfriend too. She just like, like screaming, just like hugged me to the point where it was kind of like, yo, is she gonna like kill me? And you know, like my my manager was there, he was like, yo, like chill, chill. Some people are just like very passionate about meeting their idols, and I'm a very shy person. I don't know how people can just like approach people like that. Beyond insanity. Mmm. I like that flavor a lot. You do? It gives me like a very, um, kind of like a. Uh, mmm. It's a creeper. <laughs> it's a creeper, this one. Um, kind of gives you like a, <clears throat> like a bomb kind of vibe. Um, yeah, I don't think I'm gonna make it. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. So for many hip hop fans, you burst onto the scene with that stick. Something happened here, dude. <laughs> it really cranks. Something happened that was not fair. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ. Sorry, what were your question? So for many hip hop fans, you burst onto the scene with that stick where you sported the hardest, softest look of all time, the tuck job, the fanny pack. So what I wanna do is show you some other iconic looks from fanny pack enthusiasts. And mm -hmm. I'm just curious about the looks that you like, the ones that you don't like, and then maybe we can chronic king. Does that sound good? Mm -hmm. 
All right, laptop, please. How you doing? <laughs> All right. Up first, we mm. have Logic with an album art fanny pack. I like that a lot. I usually don't like stuff that has pictures on it. Jesus, how the fuck are you just? <laughs> this is actually. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um. <laughs> but that's good on him, you know. Good, good on him. Good on Logic. <sighs> Up next, we have Kendall Jenner. More of a high fashion fanny pack look. Okay. That, uh, is that Gucci right there? Or is that LV? That's Louis Vuitton. LV. I like that. I mean, I like the, the fact that some more people are getting into fanny packs. I think it's a really dope look. Um, and I wish I wore my fanny pack today. Mm -hmm. I feel like I would have done better with that wing. You see me tearing up right now? A little bit. I did the chocolate milk. Oh, you did? Mm-hmm. Quavo, Quavo, the fanny pack, and sometimes yeah. he'll toss it over the shoulder. Have you mm. ever seen the toss over the shoulder look? Fanny packs are called fanny packs because it just gives you, gets you a lot of fannies, you know. <laughs> but I feel like Quavo doesn't need it because he's just so iced out. It's not fair. Like you can't just wear all that, all you know, all that jewelry and like diamonds, and then wear a fanny pack. It's like save some fucking pussy for the rest of us, dude. <laughs> So this one is Mad Dog 357 with number nine plutonium. What is the number nine plutonium? <laughs> it's kind of like a hot Cheeto kind of flavor. Mm-hmm. Dude, I feel like what's going on right now is like so interesting because it doesn't feel like an interview. I was like walking into the building. It just feels like I'm catching up with an old friend. You know, over some because you are over some really hot wings <laughs> for some reason. Well, it's a lovely segue talking about friends because you've talked about how you cook for your friends, and when you were coming up, you created this whole network of friends, some of which were on the other side of the globe. Mm -hmm. And people say that this generation it's so selfish, it's so self-absorbed. But you seem to have special insight when it comes to the art of the bromance, and nowhere is that more apparent than in your relationship with Post Malone and these birthday surprises right. that you guys pull on each other. What was it like to hear a gospel choir singing "Glow"? <laughs> Like that. that was great, man. They're the coolest people ever. They were just like actually like showing me love, like yo, like I'm, you know, congrats on all the success. And I was like, what? That's super dope. I, I thought they would just like do it and then leave, but they were like really cool people. Was getting a mariachi band to play congratulations the sweetest thing you've ever done for a fellow bro? Yeah, the sweetest thing I've ever done for anybody. I've never even like like done that to like a female, which I probably should. It's, it's kind of hard to top that now. What are your tips for turning an internet friend into an IRL friend? You meet certain people and they're just like so lame <laughs> in real life. They just like, they're either really obnoxious or just like, you know, a little too shy. But you know, I understand I was a shy fellow myself, but then um, some people just don't expect just being close with. And like with you, man, I'm, I'm hitting off with you. We're eating wings together. And, you know, we should, we should hang out with Bill Ratchet, by the way, like, while I'm in New York. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, he really wants to hang out, and yeah. he loves you, so. Double cheeked up. Double cheeked up on a <laughs> Thursday afternoon. <laughs> Yo, let's not break this one again. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Remember, we smashed the bottle the last time. Yeah, and we had to clear the room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, so this is the last dab. We call it the last dab because it's tradition around here to put a little extra on the last wing. You don't have to. I will. If you don't want to. I will. I will, you know, if I don't. Can you actually put it on mine? Yeah, I, I'm, yeah. I'm depending on you to. <sighs> all right, all right. Okay, brother. Cheers, Brian. Cheers. All right, Brian, here we are with a half gallon of chocolate milk. 
10 kinds of hot sauce in our bellies. Mm -hmm. And before we get you out of here, I just have one last question. I've heard you say that if you didn't get into the rap game, that you would have instead ended up in the film lane. So I'm curious, with a gazillion Scovilles coursing through you, can you pitch your dream film project to me <laughs> as much detail as uh, possible? Dream film project. I really, I mean, honestly, I really want to be in Stranger Things, dude. And it's just like, you know, I'm like a little older than some of them, but like, my goal is just to be that one friend that's like, you know, personality could be anything, could be goofy, could be an asshole. I feel like I would do like a movie about like a guy that just deals truffles because that actually exists. And make it like a really serious thing where there's gangsters and there's shootouts happening and people getting killed over truffle. One that has no hot wings in it because I fucking, you know, I hate it now. You are comfortable in the Scoville spotlight. Yes. That much is for sure. And now there's nothing left to do but roll out the red carpet for you, my man. Making it through the Hot Ones gauntlet, cleaning wings, dabbing it on the last dab, doing it all the way through. This camera, this camera, or this camera, let the people know. Or that camera, let the people know what you have going on in your life. I have an album that is out called Amen. Please check that out. I, I like it a lot. It's my first ever project. And thank you, Sean. <laughs> Good job, man. Good job. Thank you. Dude, I had coffee before this, <laughs> like just straight to black coffee. <laughs> so first of all, it, you know, like suppressed my appetite. So it was like a little hard to go through the wings. Second of all, it's both. It's, a, it's a chemistry experiment in there. Yeah, so something's brewing. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, what's going on, Hot Ones fans? It's Sean Evans, and you know what? I'm not going to beg for your subscription. If you're not subscribed, turn off the video. It's over. I want just my subscribers. Come here, come here. If you're subscribed to First We Feast, I just wanna say thank you, and that I appreciate you, that I love you, and I hope that you have a great day.